Hey, first off, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to our Heavenly Father. We say, call Allah, Abinawi Yahawah, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's giving all praise to the Most High in the name of His only begotten Son. Hey, bro, did you want to grab your Bible real quick so we can talk about it? Oh, you got it on your phone? Okay, kind. So what brings you around? Okay. Oh. All praise. Okay. Okay. You ever check this out on YouTube? No. Yeah, we got a YouTube channel. We'll, we'll give you one of them cards. So, what makes you think that this word is for everybody? From my understanding, the scripture says that every person is going to be face to face at the most high. What scripture says that? You might need to pull that scripture for me. Hey, real quick, give me uh, uh, Proverbs 20 and 24. You grab me uh, second Ezra's. Is judgment only for the people of Israel or is it for everyone that was created? Well, there's going to be an ultimate judgment for everybody in the end. And I don't know if you see the world going on right now, but things are getting pretty bad, right? Everybody's ready to push that button on this country, right? But there's a judgment that's happening for Israel, right? And what he said was, that, matter of fact, I'm going to pull that up in a second. Give me a uh, second as there's one. Uh, we'll start at four. You got that? Is that the Apocrypha? Mm -hmm. Is that the Apocrypha? Absolutely. We have the Apocrypha. We have the uh, Old and New Testament. Because you know the Apocrypha, do you read the Apocrypha? Do you subscribe to it? Why not? Did you know that the uh, Apocrypha used to be in the scriptures? But it was taken out by the Protestant movement, which are a bunch of white guys, Martin Luther. So the, the Bible, uh, the King James Version 1611 came with all 80 books, right? So you gotta ask yourself, why is it that they decided to take that out? It's a great question, right? And you, you caught the right ones. Let's, let's, let's see why you're here. Bring, bring this up. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20. Verse 24, man's goings are of the Lord. Man's goings are of the Lord. So you were brought here. This young lady right here is walking by us. Come here, sister. Two minutes. Only because man's goings are of the Lord, right? So you're here because the Lord brought you here. Um, keep going. How can a man then understand his own way? Right, how can you understand your own way? And the thing that we need to understand is why it is that you think these scriptures are for everybody, right? Because what you're saying and what the Bible is saying are two different things, right? Bring that on, uh, let's get Romans 9 real quick and bring this out. Put the second Because like I'm going to tell you why we're here, right? This is why we're here. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 1, verse 4. Bring it out. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Go thy way. And show my people their sinful deeds. So we're, we're commanded by the Most High God and Christ as well, right? Because he said to all his disciples, right? Go out to the highways and hedges and compel my people, right? Because our people, there's a wedding coming. And our people don't know that there's a wedding coming, right? You see our people on the Sabbath day breaking the Sabbath. What are you supposed to do on the Sabbath day? You're supposed to rest, right? No buying, no selling. You're supposed to chill, right? This is the day that the Lord has given you. So we have to show sisters like this, right? We gotta show brothers and sisters that are around them across the street why, what it is that they're doing wrong. Bring right? it out. Bring it up. Verse, verse five. Go thy way and show my people their sinful deeds and their children their wickedness, which they have done against me, that they may tell their children children because the sins of their fathers are increased in them. Right, so do you think if one generation wasn't taught how to serve God, do you think they're going to teach their children and the next generation to serve God? But if they don't know God themselves, right, what, what's the whole duty of man? Do you know that? Grab me a... What's the, what's the whole duty of man? There you go. So if 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 our previous generation doesn't know the commandments, 
how can they teach it to their kids? Right? This world tells you you can do whatever you want. Absolutely. And that's because could it be that his parents but was his were his parents not honoring God? There you go. So if your parents aren't honoring God, there's probably a good percentage that you're not gonna teach your kids how to honor God. Right. Right? This word will tell you that you just go to church. Oh, absolutely. You're, you're completely right, right? The Holy Spirit teaches us all things, right? And that's the comfort. But us as a people, a real generational curse is us not knowing how to serve our Heavenly Father, right? So because we have this curse upon us, we're going to continue in the ignorance and the cycle will continue until someone has the courage to break that cycle and follow the Lord, right? Absolutely. Oh, it, it talks all about other nations. It talks about how other nations are going to be serving us in the kingdom. Right. Right? When, when uh, If you go to the book of Ezekiel, it, it shows how the temple of God is being made. Right? It talks about the outer court that's left for who? For the Gentiles. Because they can't come into the kingdom of God. Right? But the Christian church will tell you God loves everybody. So does that mean God loves rapists? Does that, does that mean that God loves murderers? Right. Does that mean that God loves homosexuals? Right, bring it out. Does that mean that God loves Kamala Harris? <laughs> Donald Trump? Right. Barack Obama? Right. Hell no. Nah. God can't stand them, right? As our people should too, right? We're supposed to hate what God hates. Right. Right. But our people are taught to love everything, including their oppressors. Right. Including the people who have put shackles on their necks and on their bodies. Bring it out. Right? That laden them with these, these these burdens that we can't handle, right? When you buy a house, look. When you buy a house, this is the wickedness of these people, right? When you buy a house, they charge you seven percent, eight percent, ten percent interest on a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan. Damn. First of all, why the why are houses so damn expensive? Right. Right. That's just straight robbery, right? But then when you look at the breakdown on the money that you're paying back. You're paying back two times more than what you put, that you actually want. Right? What you got? Bring it up. It's the book of Romans, chapter 9 from the top. And this, is, this will sort of answer your question, of course. You know, just hear it out. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow, meaning that he's in pain, right? Why is he in pain? Let's find out. Continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. For my brethren, my kinsmen. Now, your brethren is of your own nation, correct? Right. Your kinsmen is your kinfolk. Right. Keep going. According to, to the, the flesh. flesh, according to the air we breathe, according to the flesh, according to the doctrine that the Christianity Church teaches us, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, who are Moabites, who are Israelites, who are Edomites, who are Israelites, who are Israelites, right? Let's keep going. To whom pertaineth the adoption? and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. And who did Christ do what? Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. So right there, it just told you that Christ only came for the Israelites, and the Israelites alone. Now if we go to uh, Matthew, uh, 15, 20, you got it ready? Bring it up. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21. Bring it up. And she shall bring forth a son. Now, real quick, what this is, is this is a prophecy of the future, right? This is talking about Mary and her uh, her being pregnant. Book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, 
For he shall save his people, all people. His people from their sins. He's going to save his people. Now grab me that in 1524. Now this here, after he was born, what Christ said to everybody, or to the apostles. You got it? Bring it up. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. Bring it up. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Of the house of Israel. That's kind of, that's pretty cut and dry. I mean, if you need more than that, then you know, I don't know. Matter, matter of fact, let's get uh, let's get Second Ezra 6, 654. We're gonna give him that one. Let's see what he thinks of that. Bring it up. It's the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Bring it out. Let's be the Lord God of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. He hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Now he's saying he has raised up a horn of salvation. That's talking about Christ. But he said it's only for his people, right? Come on, let me read 68 again. Come on. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of the holy prophets, which have been since, since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Now, do you think, if you look in this world, do you think there are some people that hate us? That dislike us, right? That, that, that keep us at the bottom of society, right? That don't let us uh, expand our business ventures, right? To, to, to get corner stores or to get hot dog carts or, you know, they, they want to buy up every single corner so that we can't get a hold of that corner, right? These are the same people who do this to us, right? These are the same people who buy up all the 7-Elevens, right? These are the same people who buy up all the liquor stores, right? And where do they put them at? The check cashing places. They put them in the hood. And who do you find in the hood? Our people, right? So if God is going to save us from anybody, it's going to be from them, right? Right? He's going to take us out of their hands, right? It's like... I'm trying to think of a, 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 a good comparison to it. Um, and yeah, I mean, hey, that's that's the best kind of comparison you can really, I mean, the Superman save both the criminal and Lois Lane, who's always trying to get, they're always trying to kidnap Lois Lane. Come on, she ain't that, it's not that serious with her, right? She like, she below average, right? But you know, even look, King Kong. A big gorilla saving a white woman. What kind of shit is that? You know that's some racist ass shit. Damn. Excuse my French. But it's always the Edomite woman. They get no salvation. These other nations don't get no salvation, right? When you go to the book of Obadiah, it tells you a perfect judgment that's going to happen to these. What you got? Second Ezra? Hey, what you got? Stick a finger in that. Let me get this Obadiah real quick, because I want to show them what, what, what's going to happen to these Edomites. These Edomites that are ruling over us and run this country. Right? You know, what's crazy is that, you know, these people are feeling real emboldened. Right? They're feeling real pride, because now they got their savior in the, in the White House. Right? A White House that was built by black blood, if that makes sense. Right? Bring this out. Uh yeah, let's do eighteen. Matter of fact, let's uh, start at the start at the top. Let's start about up here, just to get just so we can get context of what it's saying. Right. The book of Obadiah one and one. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye and Salakia. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Meaning that he's made up, he's made them small, right? You have the heathen, and he's made them small or despised among them, right? Uh, bring, uh, jump up to eighteen. Obadiah one and eighteen, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. Now, what that's talking about? That's talking about the Israelites. It's talking about northern kingdom and southern kingdom, right? And the house of Esau for stubble. And what do you what happens with stubble? 
it gets burnt up, right? And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And they shall be not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. So all of these devils that walk up and down on stolen property, they're going to be eaten up by the Lord. Right. Right. But before they get eaten up by the Lord, they need to get their asses ready because they're going in slavery. Right. Right. They're getting chains put on their necks just like they put chains on our ancestors' necks. Right. And they're going to be real tight too. And I know Yahshua going to whip this. Whip the crap out of them. That's right. You ready to go into slavery, sir? Finish. You don't know what's going on. Him and his mold by wife. Ob Obadiah chapter 1 verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. Upon all the heathen. Right? That day is coming fast. Right? You see Russia. Right? You see China. Hey, everybody's been congratulating Trumpy on his victory. But China gave him a warning. He said, don't even think about competing with us because we will blow you out of this water, essentially. That's what he said, right? Bring it up. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. So all those chains they put on our necks are the same chains that are going their necks. Right. Right. That's only righteous. That's righteous right there. Right? The Lord says, give me the, uh, we talk to yeah, yeah, we, we, we get that one too. So when it's talking about people getting brought up out of their grave, are you talking about in Revelation? Or are you talking about in Matthew? In Revelation? So these are all end time prophecies that have happened and are going to happen. Like some things have already happened. Like if we go to, um, what is it, uh, Revelation 18, I think it is, where it talks about the another wonder in heaven uh, with the dragon. And it shows who the dragon is. That has already happened, right? Matter of fact, let's get that. I think it's uh, Revelation 18. Yeah, Revelation 18. Yeah, Revelation 18. Yeah, Revelation 18. Pretty sure it's Revelation 18. It starts off with another wonder in heaven. Yeah, right. Um, when it talks about Satan being bound up a thousand years, that already happened. That was when uh, the Dark Ages, they call it the Middle Ages, where all of a sudden they don't have no history of, right? That was the time when Esau was laid um, laid under them chains. You found it? Come on, bring it out. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, this is deep, right? That's seven heads and ten horns. That's talking about the nations and the governments of the world, right? Let's keep going. And ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered. Now it's talking about a woman. Who is this woman that the dragon was standing in front of? Do you know? Right, because it, it, it likens Israel to a comely and delicate woman, right? We're the Lord's woman. Keep going. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. So it's talking about, this was when Christ came out of Israel, right? He came out of the tribe of Judah. Uh, the woman that was carrying, obviously, was his mother Mary, right? So, what happened when he was born? Who was attempting to kill him? Herod? Herod the Tetrarch? He was trying to kill Christ. And what happened with that situation, right? An angel came and told him to flee into Egypt. Now, historically, Egyptians were a dark complexion. If you see her walking in Egypt, you're going to be able to spot her no problem. Right? You see this guy right here, you're going to be able to spot him no problem. Right? Christ was a melanated man. 
and he blended in with the children of Egypt, right? Let's keep going. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And that rod of iron is coming soon, right? That rod of iron that Christ is coming with when he gets here, when he cracks that sky, is the same rod of iron that he's going to beat all these nations down who don't want to serve him, right? There's another precept, I believe it's in Luke, where he says, those mine enemies, right, which would not that I reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. Right? Does that sound like a loving, a loving God? Does that sound like a, a, a God that loves everybody? Hell no. Nah. No. Keep going. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had their place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now this is talking about, you know, after, uh, you know, uh, after all of this tribulation, right? We're in the wilderness right now as we speak because we're not in the land of Israel, right? Israel is our home. Um, anywhere other than Israel is the wilderness, right? Which, uh, yeah, bring that up. The book of Luke chapter 19, verse 27. But those my enemies, which were not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Right, and that's just a confirmation of what I was trying to break down to you. Now, give me that Second Ezra six real quick, and we're gonna show this brother real quick. The book of Second Ezra, chapter six, verse fifty-four. Because you're completely right. The Lord did make everybody, but out of those people that He made, out of all those people, He has His favor. Like I'm sure you have a lot of pairs of shoes, right? You got a lot of clothes at the crib. But I'm sure you have your favorites, right. right? You have those shoes that are like, yeah, I'm gonna rock those tonight. So does the Lord. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. And the people also whom thou hast chosen, the chosen people, Israel. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the will for our sakes. So he said that he made the world for our sakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, um, I think you're talking about verses one to three, and then it talks about after the thousand years are completed, See, here's the problem is that when you look in Revelation, Revelation isn't in order, right? It was a vision that uh, that John was receiving and everything was scrambled. Like he saw some over here and then some over there and then some back over here and then go into the past and then jump into the future. So it's not in order, right? So when it's talking about something, then it'll switch up to something else completely different, right? Because last time I checked, when Christ comes to reign, He's reigning forever, right? So this thousand years that is talking about something else, right? Because Christ's kingdom is forever. It's the Most High's kingdom, and Christ is going to be reigning over it. So you're asking these meat questions. Hey, we might have to bring you to class. I don't know. We might have to bring you to class. Because you're asking these meat questions. I don't know if the street is ready for these meat questions. So... Jacob's trouble, you know, some brothers think that Jacob's trouble is coming. Some people think that we're already in Jacob's trouble. Last time I checked, we've been getting troubled since we've left Israel. You know what I mean? And since we've left Israel, it's just been getting progressively worse and worse and worse. Hey, Jacob's trouble can be as long as the Lord wants it to be. See, the problem is, is that he needs us to come back to him. Right, he needs us to come back to him and keep the commandments. I haven't seen it yet. Have you seen it? And Daniel, it just talks about it talks about uh, in the time of Jacob's trouble, and then it says, "But he will be saved out of it." It doesn't give us a specific time frame. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm saying, like, we already. But the third temple is being built by Christ. 
it's not being built by man. Those ishes over there, they think they're building a temple, but that's one of the things that the Lord is going to be destroying. That's one of the things that the Lord is going to be bringing to rubble, right? So he's not honoring that. He's not in that temple made by man, right? That third temple is going to be built by Christ. Your body is the temple, right? And that temple that he's raising up is that same great army of the 144. That's the temple, the internal temple that is being built by Yahweh Shai, right? But again, in order to have that done, there's a job that you must do, right? Grab me, uh, keep your finger in there. Grab me uh, Deuteronomy 10 and 12, right? Because, you know, it's good that you know your Israel, right? That's definitely a blessing because not everybody knows it. Not every black man, Hispanic man, or Native American man know that they are the children of Israel. That's right. So you are already ahead of the curve. But now you need to figure out what it is you need to do. Bring it up. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. Bring it out. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which i command thee this day for thy good for thy good right so do you i know you know that today is the sabbath what other commandments do you know say it again i think you will i mean you can name it off in 10 but now the 613 like they're broken down into different sections, right? Like you got your sacrificial law, which we can't do because we don't have a priest, right? We don't have a temple, so you can knock those off. Some commandments are given to women, right? We can't, what do we look like having uncleanness once a month? That's not us, that's them, right? So we can't keep those laws, but the laws that you can keep are stuff like fringes, right? Like your dietary law, what does your dietary law look like? No pork, no shrimp, crab, lobster. Hey, all praises. That's it. Right? I see you got your beard popping. That's a commandment, right? What about fringes? You need fringes? You don't do them? Or you don't need them? I believe that. It's written in my heart, in my mind. Dang. Um, was Christ wearing fringes? That's show me. Bring it out! Bring the hem of the garment. Bring it out! Hem of the garment. You remember the woman uh, that had the sickness for twelve years of blood? Yeah. And she came behind Christ and she touched the hem of his garment. You know what that means for him? Actually, yeah. Pull that up in the BLB. Let's see what. Uh, I got it. You got it. Yeah. Bring it out. Book of Matthew, chapter nine, verse forty. Bring it and out. behold, a woman which was diseased with the issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. That hem of his garment, let's see what that word is. Pull that up in the BLB, yeah, come The water. Let's see what that's talking about. Right, because, you know, a lot of things are, you know, we know that these scriptures is like a puzzle, right? And you gotta piece it together to get the complete story. It goes also with the definitions, right? The definitions of certain words you have to figure out. Bring it up. Uh, the outline of biblical usage for him. The extremity of prominent part is, is, uh, is G, what's that? 2899, and it's Crespadon. Crespadon, let's see what it means. The extremity of prominent part of a thing, edge, skirt, margin. The fringe of a garment. The fringe of a garment. Right. So Christ wore fringes. That's right. Right? So aren't we trying to be Christ-like? You see these brothers? They all got fringes on, right? This is us trying to serve the Lord to the best of our ability. Right. right? You're not gonna see this even wear any fringes. Haha, <laughs> you finished. Right, you're lucky if you can get them wear socks. 
Lord. Yeah, let's read the law on it. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Bring it out! Verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make fringes in the border of their garments throughout their generations, that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And this shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them. And do them. That's the kicker right there. What you got? Bring it out. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Bring it out. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Meaning he didn't come to destroy it, right? Let's keep reading. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Until all be fulfilled. Now that all being fulfilled, that's him cracking the sky, right? That's him passing judgment on this world. That's him uh, uh, recouping his 144, right? These are the things that still need to happen. So therefore, the law is still in effect. Right. right? If you need fringes, we all, you know, let us know. Uh, the brother's going to give you a card. You know, you can hit up the email and stuff. Let us know you need fringes. We'll hook you up. Dang. Out of control. That's crazy. What other questions you got? Got none right now? Yeah, check it out. You know? Yeah, yeah let's stick around. Tell stick around. Bring it out. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Bring it out. Gather yourself together. Gather yourself together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. And what, the, what nation is not desired more than the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man, woman, and child? Right. They don't want us here, right? Look, they, they, trying, to, they trying to pass, you know, both the laws where you get to, you get all the illegal immigrants that came into this land that was stolen, might I add, that was stolen, sending them back where they came from. How about we send you white boys back to the Caucasus Mountains? Right. right. How about that? How about we send y'all back to the Caucasus Mountains where y'all came from, right. right? How about we send you back to the land of Edom? Let's go back to Petra. Let's send you back to Petra. Right, let's send you back to the clefts of the rocks. Right. Right, so check that info out. Let us know, right? I don't. I tell them to stick around. I don't hey, if you, wanna, if you wanna stick around, the brother's gonna bring it out some more. You gonna head out? Uh, All right, be hey, safe, take brother. It easy. Be safe out here. Bro. All praises. Hey, good teaching. Hey, all praise to the Most High. Hey, I'm your brother Maha. We want to give all praise to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son. We say, Call Allah Abba Nawi Yahweh. About Hashem Yahweh Shah. We say, Death to America. Death to America. We say, Death to the heathen. Death to the heathen. We say, Put these white boys in chains. Put these white boys in chains. That's right. Come here, Shalom! Come here, Shalom!